So what is SVG exactly? It sounds like just another web acronym that has been made up and thrown at us. But SVG actually stands for Scalable Vector Graphics. So what does that mean? One simple definition of SVG is to say it is a language for describing 2D graphics. An even simpler definition would be to say that it is XML for web graphics. Now, even though the specification has been around since 1998, it's only been in the last two or three years that SVG use and popularity has really exploded. I mean, we've seen it used in icons and icon sets. A lot of infographic tools use it, a lot of info visualizations and responsive images, and even banner ads now are switching over from the old Swift Flash format to the new light portable SVG format. So one of the many benefits of using SVG files is that they are resolution independent, which means they can scale infinitely. I have a demonstration here to show you that fact. On the left side, I have a raster image and that's a PNG file and it's 200 pixels wide by 200 pixels tall. On the right side, I have an SVG image, all generated from the same source. The same dimensions apply. It's 200 pixels wide by 200 pixels tall. And underneath both those images, I have an empty image tag. And I want to show you what happens when I assign this empty image tag to display one, the PNG first, and then the SVG at a larger size. So to do that, I'm going to open up our console. As you can see, I have the originals on the left. As I said previously, I have a diggy PNG file here. You can see it's 200 pixels by 200 pixels. And on the right, I have a Diggy SVG, and that is also 200 pixels by 200 pixels. Now below those two images, I have an empty image tag, and that image tag has been set to 800 pixels wide by 800 pixels tall. And you can see that the source attribute is empty. And what I'm going to do is initially, I'm going to assign that source attribute to the Diggy.png file to see what happens when I when I set the source image to a PNG file that's much smaller than this in this uh, intended size. Okay, so now if you take a look, this large image is now showing this original 200 by 200 PNG file. As you can see, there's significant degradation in the image. The lines are completely just blurred. Uh, not looking very sharp at all. The even the colors seem a bit washed out. So you can you can see that this is something you do not want to do, and that's because one attribute of bitmap in Im images, which is another name for raster images, is that they are resolution dependent. So once you've created them for a specific display size, increasing their size and displaying it at a larger size becomes problematic. So. I'm going to go back to our source here and I'm going to switch this diggy.png so that it now points to the SVG file. Okay, I've just switched that over and as you can see, the image is very crisp, very sharp. The colors are still vibrant and it looks almost the same as the original SVG image, even though it was originally created at 200 pixels by 200 pixels, you can see that it is scaled perfectly and has not lost any any resolution at all. Now, that's the point. SVG images, no matter what initial resolution they are created at, can scale infinitely, and therefore you can use the same image to display on any number of devices with different display sizes. Another thing to realize about SVG files is that they're just simple text files. Here we can take a look at the two images I used in the previous example. I have the diggy.png file first, and that comes in at about five kilobytes, still fairly small. And the diggy.svg version of that image, and that weighs in only at two kilobytes. So that's less than half the size of the PNG version. And why is that? And that's just because 
SVG files are XML files, and XML files are just simple text files. So let's go ahead and view these files in my text editor. First, I'll open up the PNG file, and you'll see that there's, you know, it's a PNG file. There's nothing much I can do with a PNG file in a text editor. But if I go and open up my the SVG version of the file, you see that you're greeted with what looks like some funny looking HTML. I have these tags here called SVG, these auto tags. Okay, so that gives you a clue about what it is. And inside of that, I have some other tags. Maybe you've seen them or not. I have a G tag here, a rect underneath that. I have IDs, you've seen those before. And under the second G tag, there's something called a path and polygons. And don't worry about what these are. I'll explain what exactly what they are in an upcoming video. But I just want you to see that it's just simple text and XML. Now, here's what I can do with this. Since this is just regular old XML, I can open up any SVG file and copy the code. Okay, I'll hit copy and go to any HTML file. Here I have an example HTML file set up. Right now it's currently empty. I just have a style tag. Um, I have a H3 tag for a title. And then I have an empty div tag with the class SVG wrapper. Now, what I can do is just paste the SVG code I copied straight out of that SVG file. And I'll paste it right in there, right into the HTML code. I'll align it just to look nice. And uh, hit save. Now I have SVG content straight out of an SVG file directly embedded in line with the rest of my HTML. Now if I pull up this HTML page in the browser, it's what it looked like before, and I hit reload. Now I have my SVG content directly in line with the rest of my HTML content. And now this is part of the regular DOM of this HTML page. And since that's the case, I can just right click on any element in the image. So this is a this is one of the elements in the image, the right ear. I'll just right click that, hit inspect. And now I've just pulled that element up in the browser inspector. And I can do that for every other part of the image. So let's see, let's try the left ear. Where's that left ear? Left ear, right there. Um, let's try that for the head. Inspect. And the head is there just like any other regular old HTML DOM object. SVG content is just simple XML text that can be embedded alongside any other HTML on a web page. So you've just seen how SVG is nothing more than text formatted as XML. And you've seen how it can be embedded on any web page alongside the rest of your HTML. If you've thought about this for a minute, you've probably guessed that if the SVG is now part of the DOM, therefore it's now dynamic. And that's exactly what I'll demonstrate here. First, I'll open up a console. And let's pull up the head. Inspect, pull up the head. There's the head, okay? Right now it's set to this blue color here. And what I can do directly through the browser inspector is just change that to something else. Let's try pink. And now the dog's head is pink. And we can do that for any other element in your SVG. Okay, now let's take this a step further. Since I can manipulate the SVG attributes directly through the browser inspector, that means I can do so through the console via JavaScript. Let's try that. I'm going to go ahead and try looking for an element. Let's try pulling out the dog's collar. And I'll go ahead and Create a variable. Let's query the, the DOM. Uh, I think it's ID is collar. Okay, let's make sure we have that. And there we have the SVG polygon that defines the dog's collar. Now, since I have this in JavaScript, I can do anything I want with it, including digging into the style element and pulling out the fill, which is the color in SVG, 
and changing it to something else. Let's try changing it to to that gold. Hmm, let me try changing it to something else. Let's try red. There we go. That looks better on the dog. But you get the idea. Every SVG element is available to you via JavaScript. And this is why SVG lends itself so well to JavaScript animation. It's because every graphic element in your SVG image is directly accessible in JavaScript. So if this was your first look at SVG, hopefully it's now been demystified a bit. In our next video, we'll look at some basic shapes and primitives you can create in SVG.